Okay, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to talk about relief features. And in fact, this is one in a series of videos that will be focusing on relief features. Today, I will be looking at slopes. When we talk about relief, we are talking about the height, the depth, the slope or gradient, as well as the shape of the land. So we, are, we could talk about going up a hill, going down a hill. We could talk about a steep hill or a gentle hill. We could talk about a flat surface. We could talk about the coast. And we could talk about the indentations of the coast, which includes our bays and coves. And we could talk about areas along the coast where the land is projecting outwards to the sea, which would be our headlands and even spits. All of those things are relief features. Now, relief features include landforms as well as surfaces. And these surfaces may be flat or slanted. If it is a slanted surface, then we refer to the surface as a slope. Now, slopes may be described as being steep or gentle. It is a steep slope if the height is changing rapidly with distance. On a topographic map, we can identify steep slopes by closely spaced contour lines. A gentle slope is a slope where the height is changing gradually with distance. On a topographic map, this is shown by widely spaced contour lines. Then we could talk about different types of slopes. The types of slopes are stepped slopes, which are also called terraced slopes, concave slopes, convex slopes, as well as uniform slopes. Stepped or terraced slopes are slopes with alternating steep and gentle sections. Concave slopes are slopes which are steeper at the top than at the bottom. Convex slopes are slopes which are steeper at the bottom than at the top. And uniform slopes, also called even slopes, are straight slopes with no significant section which is steeper or gentler than the other. Let us examine the, the, these different types of slopes more closely. So we begin with our stepped or terraced slope. Now, if you notice on the map to the left, we see contour lines. Notice that at certain points, the contour lines are far apart, and at certain points, the contour lines are close together. Where the contour lines are far apart, it shows that the land is gentle. Where they are close together, it means that the land is steep. So we notice that along this slope, we have alternating areas of gentle sections, then steep sections, then gentle section again, then steep section, and it continues along the slope like that. So if we look to the right and we'll see, we will have a better idea of what this type of slope looks like in reality. It looks like a series of steps. And this is why it is called a stepped slope or a terraced slope. Now, terraced slopes 
and terracing can occur naturally, but they can also be created by people. In fact, terracing is one of the methods by which we try to prevent soil erosion along a slope. When the slope is transformed into a series of steps, it will slow down the rate of overland flow and therefore that will slow down the rate of soil erosion. The next slope we're going to be focusing on is concave slopes. Concave slopes are steeper at the top than at the bottom. If you notice on the contour line, contour map, areas where the values are greater, which will indicate the top of the slope, have closely spaced contour lines and areas where the contour values are smaller, which indicate the bottom of the slope, have contour lines that are widely spaced. So this means that the slope is steeper at the top than at the bottom. This type of slope is common along uh, river courses and is shaped largely by the flow of the river. Notice on this side, where we are looking at the slope in its, in its in cross section, notice that at the top, the land falls steeply and then the closer we get to the bottom, the gentler it gets, okay? So this is a concave slope. Convex slopes. Convex slopes, let's look at this map. Notice we can identify, we can distinguish the top of the slope from the bottom of the slope based on the values of the contour line. And what we notice at the top of the slopes, the contour lines are far apart. And at the bottom, the contour lines are closely spaced, which means that the land is gentle at the top and it is steep at the bottom. This is how we describe a convex slope. Notice over here, when we look at the slope in its cross section, we have a gentle top area. And then as we move towards the bottom of the slope, it gets steeper. Now, this type of slope is usually created where the land is subjected to soil creep. We also find this type of slope along acid lava domes of volcanic landforms. And uh, um, I should add, in that type of landform, the lava is acidic lava, which moves very slowly. So notice for soil creep, the material is moving very slowly. And for uh, acid lava, the acidic lava, the lava is also moving slowly, all right? So it's that slow movement that is going to contribute to this type of shape. Whereas in the case of the river, there is rapid movement of of, of, of the water along the slope and that helps to shape the concave slope, okay? What we have here now is a uniform slope also called an even slope. Notice for the contour lines, 
the contour lines are almost the same distance apart. All right. There is no section that is significantly steeper than any other section. And so we see that displayed in its cross section. We have a straight slope going down. Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about is a cliff. Now, a cliff is also a type of slope, but what is most significant about a cliff is that it is extremely steep. Now, it is impossible that contours for contours to meet in reality. Yet when we look on this map, it appears as if the contour lines are actually meeting. What this is actually showing is that the contour lines are extremely close together. And we know that the, the closer the contour lines, the steeper it is. On some maps, there, would, there, there are some additional features that are used to emphasize the fact that it is a cliff. So we might see a cliff symbol, but whether or not there is a cliff symbol, we should be able to identify the cliff based on the fact that the contour lines are so close together that it appears to meet. All right, so over here, we see this steep drop in the land. Now, this slope or cliff is commonly found along coastal areas, but we can also find them in inland areas. For example, even along a river's course, there are points where the riverbed drops along a cliff, and when the water moves over that land, we call the feature a waterfall. All right, so I hope that you have learned something from this video. In upcoming videos, we are going to look at some other relief features, and I will try to help you to develop your understanding of these relief features so that you will be able to identify them in reality or on a map. Okay, please don't forget to like to share and to subscribe. And you may also leave a comment.